In this video, we're going to discuss an object-oriented programming technique called composition. And so in previous lessons, we've talked about inheritance, and we know that we can have an inherited relationship between two classes. So let's say we have a vehicle class And then we have two subclasses, a car and a truck. All right, we call this an is a relationship, right? Because we can say a car is a vehicle through this relationship, a truck is a vehicle through this relationship. It's a standard inherited relationship known as is a relationship. And that's pretty much our standard inheritance. And we have this whether it's a class or an interface, but you know, an apple is a fruit, a car is a vehicle, a house is a building. We have another type of relationship called composition. And composition is a has a relationship. And in a has a relationship, a class contains instance variables that are references to other objects. So in our inherited relationship where we may have class car, we may also have class engine. Now car and engine themselves don't have a relationship, but if we created a specific derived class named, oh, let's say Ford, then Ford may have a property of type engine. And so if in this class we had a property for the type of engine, then it would relate to this type of class object, not a variable type. So here's an example of this composition relationship in our code. So we have a class car, and for the sake of brevity, I gave it one public property for color. And then we have class engine, which has two public properties for max speed and a Boolean for is turbo. Now, car and engine don't have their own relationship structure. A car stands alone and an engine stands alone. But if we create a derived class, that comes from our car, then we could say a Ford is a car, because this is an is a relationship, but we can see that the Ford class contains a public member that is of type engine. And so we can say a Ford has an engine while it is a car. And so when we have public members in our classes this way, then we can take advantage of the fact that this is a class and so our engine type property is going to have access to all of the information inside of the engine class. So through the accessing engine type, I can find out the max speed and is a turbo for this particular type of car. So it allows us to get a little more densely packed with our information and allow us to create data types uh, based on the classes that we are creating without um, having to sacrifice or create um, additional structures since we already have these objects. This composition relationship becomes even more true when we start dealing with larger objects. Uh, let's look at another example real quick. If we had a customer object and an address object, then the properties and address could th be things like the uh, street address, city, state, and zip code, whereas customer would have information like name and phone number. But if we created this has a relationship through composition to an address property and customer which pointed to this object type and address, then we can logically have access to all of the information in the address class. 
So I'm sure you can see how this kind of relationship is useful and it is often used and commonly seen in many different uh, software development paradigms. So pay attention to when you see properties that are members of another class so that you are familiar with this idea of composition.